I mean, sexual pleasure is important, right? I feel like if you don't have control over your body, the one thing that you can legitimately say you own, <laughs> right? Like, really, do you have control over any other aspect of your life? I don't think you do. And I think, yes, the ability to own your body, the ability to determine who you love and who you have fun with and have pleasure with is an integral part of the struggle for liberation. I'm thinking of a woman called Tafatswa who had a Ugandan lover and was describing how her Ugandan partner was experienced at performing the arts of Kunianza with her tongue. And Kunianza is a traditional East African method of, you know, making a woman orgasm. Traditionally is the dick, using the dick to like tap the clit, but she could do it with her tongue. That sounded hot. Hi everybody, my name is Nanada Kosechiema, um, many things. I'm a feminist activist, I'm a writer, I'm a blogger, I'm a communication strategist. Mm -hmm. And you're also an author. I am, I'm the author of a book called The Sex Lives of African Women. You know, the title says it all. The book is a non-fiction book, a creative non-fiction book, which basically shares the experiences of diverse African women when it comes to sex, sexuality, pleasure. It has three broad themes a theme of self-discovery, a theme of healing, and a theme of freedom. And, you know, basically, each woman's story sits somewhere on that spectrum. And sometimes they travel through the different themes. And yeah, it's, it's basically African women speaking for themselves, sharing the experiences. And I hope it's one that, you know, every African woman can sort of find herself in somewhere. For my 30th birthday, myself and a group of other African women, we went on holiday to the western region of Ghana, which is one of my favorite places. We were in a small town called Exim, we were on the beach, just, you know, chilling, sitting around in a swimming costumes, drinking cocktails, and our conversation turned to sex time and time again. And I've, I found, like, we had the most open, honest, frank conversations about sex that at the time I had ever had. And I had a bit of a Eureka moment. I'd been blogging for a while for the organization I worked for, I had also been part of bloggers meetings and bloggers had asked me why don't you write a blog of your own and I was like I have nothing to blog about and so you know when the holiday was over I was just like oh my god that had been such an incredible holiday the conversations we had about sex were so inspiring and revelatory I wanted to continue having those kind of conversations so I came back called my best friend Malika and I was like you know I want to write a blog about sex and she said, I want to do a book about sex. And I said, let's do the blog together and later turn it into a book. And that's how we started Adventures from the Bedrooms of African Women. And as part of that project, I have been very much invested in encouraging African women to share their stories of sex. You know, I feel like doing so is a political act, as a way for us to learn from one another, to heal from trauma, and importantly, to figure out how to have pleasurable sexual lives. Because nobody really teaches us about sex. Nobody really teaches us our body is ours and we have a right to pleasure. And, and that's really what I wanted to do. And through that project, you know, I felt like actually I want to go a bit deeper. I want to have longer conversations with women and you know, learn a lot more than I would learn if they submitted a blog post to Adventures, for example. And so I decided I would interview African women from as many African countries and the diaspora as possible and put that into a book. I also wanted to do this because I felt like, especially in mainstream media, especially Western media, the stories about African women's sex and sexuality was always negative, it was always limited, it was like, you know, African women are constantly pregnant or they don't have access to sanitary towels or they've been cut. And all of that is true, but I knew there was so much more than that. And so that's why I set out to write this book. Well, I don't know if there was a particular day, but sometime in 2014, I decided I, want to, I wanted to write a book and I was going to interview African women about the experiences of sex and put that into a book. And I made that decision and there was a time I was DMing, somebody had DMed me and was asking me questions, you know, I would get that from time to time. 
she was confused about her sexuality so i was reassuring her and answering her questions as much as i could and then i was like i'm going to write a book about sex you know are you interested in me interviewing you um, her name is Baba, and hers is one of the stories in the healing section of the book. But that was the first interview I did, and after that I felt motivated to continue to reach out to African women and ask if I, they would be willing to share their stories with me. And almost everybody I reached out to said yes. Um, Fatu's story, when I interviewed her, she just turned 60. Um, she's a queer polyamorous woman who lives in Senegal. You know, Helen Banda's story, originally from Zambia, lives in America. You know, and after 10 years of marriage, and her husband decided to open up their marriage, um, and they're both kinky and queer, you know. Um, yeah, so I feel like these are some of the stories that stand out in people's memories. Well, after having done about 20 interviews, I literally put everybody's name, age, country in a spreadsheet, and I was writing down for me the themes that were coming across in each person's story. And for me, I realized that there were some commonalities, right? There were lots of experiences where people either needed to heal or were on some sort of healing journey, whether they had decided to practice celibacy or go on a retreat. And there's some people who, for me, were clearly on a journey of discovery and trying to figure out who they were. Sometimes it involved literal travel, like traveling from one place to another because of love. There were some people who I felt, you know, they were living their best sex lives. Um, and so I chose to, exp like to, in a sense, divide the stories into those th themes, which were broadly healing, self-discovery and freedom. It was enjoyable. It was fun. And I made it fun, you know, especially in the pre-pandemic days. There were some people I would invite to my house, we'll have a glass of wine and we'll chat. And I enjoyed talking to women about sex and sexuality. And I think women also enjoy speaking about the subject because we are not often given permission to speak about it in an open and honest and non-judgmental way you know so I, I feel like for a lot of people the conversations themselves were healing oftentimes when people would tell me something and they'll be like you're the first person I'm telling this to you know so I think I was able to create space such that people could open up and share their experiences with me I feel like it's super 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 important right we live in a world which is not actually very kind to women and people who are from minority backgrounds in general and so for me it's really important that I contribute to creating a world that's safe for people um, that are marginalized by society and when it comes to issues of sex and sexuality women are often placed in a box so that they can only have sex within particular boundaries whether those boundaries be heterosexuality or marriage you know and I feel like well, we need to just be allowed to be and just to live. I mean, sexual pleasure is important, right? I feel like if you don't have control over your body, the one thing that you can legitimately say you own, <laughs> right? Like, really, do you have control over any other aspect of your life? I don't think you do. And I think, yes, the ability to own your body, the ability to determine who you love and who you have fun with and have pleasure with is an integral part of the struggle for liberation. It's important because, you know, it's not good enough, right? Like, we deserve pleasure, we deserve freedom, we deserve liberation. And for me, the conversation is a way for us to start questioning the limits that society places on us and for us to find the courage to break free of those limits and to figure out what we want for ourselves. Also, take your time to figure out what you really want, you know, um, give yourself the space, give yourself the grace, forgive yourself for situations you may have found yourself in the past that hasn't really served you, create space to heal from traumatic experiences, um, and healing can be done in a variety of ways, there isn't just one way, so figure out what works for you. Um, give yourself space and time to experiment and experiment most of all with yourself.